Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we're going to compute the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over x to the 2n plus 1 dx. Here n is a positive integer. Okay, we're going to compute this integral using the residue theorem. We're not going to prove that it is convergent, but I encourage you to leave me a comment and let me know why this integral is convergent. And in general, if 2n were uh, was uh, a real number, what would be the values of n for which this integral would be convergent? Okay, let's denote this integral by i sub n. We're going to introduce some notations. So we're going to denote by f sub n, the function defined by f sub n of z equals 1 over z to the 2n plus 1. And we're going to denote by p sub n, the polynomial defined by p sub n of z equals z to the 2n plus 1. Now, obviously, f sub n is a holomorphic function, and it is holomorphic on its domain. The domain is uh, the complex plane without all the zeros of p sub n. And those zeros of p sub n are called the poles of our function f sub n. So we're going to find those poles because they're going to be useful in order to use the residue theorem. So to find the poles, we're going to solve the equation p sub n of z equals 0, which means uh, z to the 2n plus 1 equals 0. Now we subtract 1 from both sides, and this is what we're going to get. Then we use Euler's formula to express negative 1 as, an, uh, as a complex number. So it's going to be e to the i 2k plus 1 times pi. From now, we can take uh, the root, and we're going to find that the solutions are going to be uh, z sub k equals e to the i 2k plus 1 over 2n times pi. And k goes from 0 to 2n minus 1. Okay. Now, we're not going to use all these poles because some of these poles are not going to be contained in the domain. Uh, they're not going to be inside. They're not going to be inside the contour we're going to use. So for the contour, we're going to start with a real number r greater than 1. And we're going to denote by dr the upper half disk of radius r and centered at the origin. Then we're going to denote by gamma sub r its boundary. Now, of course, uh, when n is equal to 3, we're going to have exactly 6 poles, and 3 of them are going to be inside the white region. Okay. Now we want to find the values of k for which uh, z sub k is inside the region, so dr. Now, z sub k is inside dr if and only if 2k plus 1 times pi over 2n is between 0 and pi. Now, we can solve this compound inequality and get that uh, k must be between 0 and n minus 1. Okay, now that we know that k goes from 0 to negative 1, uh, from 0 to n minus 1, we can use the residue theorem. Now, according to the residue theorem, the integral of f of z dz along gamma r is equal to 2 pi i times the sum of all the residues of f only on poles that are contained inside the region. Now, because all these poles are simple poles, the residue of f sub n at zk is equal to 1 over the derivative of p sub n at zk. Okay, now we just compute the derivative. It's going to be 2 times n times z to the 2n minus 1. Okay? And now we multiply the numerator and the denominator by z, z sub k. Now, the reason we want to do that is because we know the value of z sub k to the 2n. It's equal to negative 1. Okay, so we multiply both 
the numerator and the denominator by z sub k. Now, in the denominator, we now have z sub k to the 2n, and we know that it's equal to negative 1. So we just replace that by negative 1. Now, the denominator does not depend on k anymore. We can take it outside of the sum and simplify. So we're going to get that the integral along gamma r of f is equal to negative pi i over n times the sum as k goes from 0 to n minus 1 of z sub k. Now, we just replace z sub k by its value. Okay, and now we can write uh, that exponential. We can write the, ex the exponential as e to the i 2k pi over 2n times e to the i pi over 2n. Okay, and then we can take out e to the i pi over 2n. Now we have the sum of terms of a geometric series, I mean a geometric sequence, and the common ratio is e to the i pi over n. Okay, so we just compute that sum, and this is what we're going to get. Now, after simplifying, we get the following. Now, I, uh, e to the i pi is simply negative 1, according to Euler's formula. So we just replace that by negative 1. Negative, negative 1 is going to be positive 1. So we're going to get 1 plus 1, which is 2. Okay, so we're going to end up with pi over n times 2i over e to the i pi over 2n minus e to the negative i pi over 2n. Now, this is simply the reciprocal of the sine of pi over 2 n, which is simply the cosecant, okay? So we get pi over n times the cosecant of pi over 2n. So on one hand, this is what we get for the integral of f sub n along the contour, the blue, the blue curve. Now we're going to split our contour into uh, two pieces. The first piece is going to be the, uh, the interval from negative r to r, and the second piece is going to be the semicircle, uh, which goes from the point with coordinates r0 to the point with coordinate negative r0. So if we do that, we can then write our integral as the integral from negative r to r of fn of x dx, because on the real line, well, z is simply equal to x plus i times 0, and i times 0 is simply 0, so we just get x, plus g of r, and g of r is the integral along the semicircle. So it's going to be the integral from 0 to pi of i times r times i to the i, th oh, times, times e to the i theta times f evaluated at r times e to the i theta d theta. Now here, r times e to the i theta is a parameterization of a semicircle. Okay, now we just need to uh, see what happens when r goes to infinity. We're going to show that when r goes to infinity, g of r tends to zero. In order to do that, we're going to take the absolute value of g of r. But before we do, we're going to use the fact that fn sub n, or f sub n of x, is even. So the integral from negative r to r can be written as twice the integral from 0 to r of f sub n at x dx. Now let's take the, at, the absolute value of g of r. Now the absolute, the absolute value of g of r is is bounded above by the integral from 0 to pi of the modulus of our integrant. Now, the modulus of the integrant is equal to r over the modulus of r to the 2n times e to the uh, i to n theta plus 1. Now, the denominator is bounded below by 
r to the 2n minus 1. Okay, because it's bounded below, from below by r to the 2n minus 1, our integrand is going to be bounded above by r over r to the 2n minus 1. Then we just integrate with respect to theta, and we're going to get exactly pi r over r to the 2n minus 1. Now remember that r is actually greater than 1, so the denominator is well defined. Now we want to take the limit of that quantity as r goes to infinity, and we see that it's equal to 0 because r to the 2n grows faster than r, and therefore g of r will tend to 0 as r goes to infinity. Now let's take the limit of the integral. As we take the limit, we know that g of r tends to 0, and the integral will tend to the integral from 0 to infinity. And the integral from 0 to infinity is precisely i sub n. Now we just need to divide both sides by 2. As we divide by 2, we get that i sub n is equal to pi over 2n times the cosecant of pi over 2n. Now here are some values of i sub n. For instance, for n equals 1, i sub n is equal to pi over 2. For n equals 2, i sub n is equal to pi root 2 over 4. And for n equals 3, i sub n is equal to pi over 3. We've reached the end of our video. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing, share, and like, and I'll see you next time. Bye.